Hello and welcome to another update. As the war goes on, so will my reports. And in this one, we'll be starting out with the reporting of fighting across the front line. Starting out by Lopkove, the village is split into two as the Russian forces have captured the southern part and Ukrainian forces have captured the eastern and northern parts, leaving this as a village split into two halves as the heavy fighting continues within it. There is essentially no village, but heavy fighting continues regardless, as both sides continue using their forces to advance in this sector, despite the heavy artillery shelling on both sides in this village. With this continued fighting across the front line, we also see further attacks southwest, south and east of Orihiv as the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks across the front line, trying to reach the village of Robodina, as well as continue their advances south and southeast of Orihiv in the direction of Novopokrovka, as they attempt to widen their advances and reach deeper into the Russian defensive lines, reaching the first line of defense as well as increased fighting here to the southwest and northeast of Orihiv in the direction of Merine and Luhivske. The Ukrainian forces have started new attacks in this direction, as well as to the southeast of Olyaipole in the direction of Marvopil. So generally we're seeing the Ukrainian forces increase the front line of the fighting. But previously we didn't include this part right here at the center in, our, in and around Holyaipole. So we're seeing the Ukrainian forces increase their pressure by attacking in multiple further points on the front line. So generally they are now attacking in nine different parts of the front line four different axes by Velika Novosilka, two by Holyaipole, two by Orihiv, and one by Lubkove, as they try to attack across different points on the front line. So what we're seeing is that the fighting, although it has decreased in uh, concentration, it is now widespread, and this means that they are back to trying to figure out where the Russian forces are weakest and continuing this battle of attrition, trying to weaken the Russian forces on the front line. And this doesn't work on its own, which is why we are seeing a lot of Ukrainian strikes behind the lines of the Russian forces. Most recently culminating with the strike on the bridge between Crimea and Kherson. This bridge right here was struck by what is allegedly a French rocket. And this development is very interesting because a few days ago, the Russian Ministry of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, announced in a meeting of the board of the department, the use of these missiles outside the zone of special military operation will mean the full involvement of the United States and Great Britain in the conflict and it will entail immediate strikes on decision-making centers on the territory of Ukraine. So we will now see, will they stay true to this red line? The Ukrainians listen to this and they stroke it anyway with French rockets. Does that mean that the Russians will respond by attacking Ukrainian decision-making centers? Or has Ukraine called Russia's bluff and the, the Russians will just pull their red line further back as they have done so far? Here we have some footage of the aftermath of the strike as well as the strike itself. We can see the strike itself is not that heavy of a strike. It is smaller than what we usually see from the Storm Shadow, which is why we assume that it is the French version of the Storm Shadow, which has a 500 kilo uh, payload. And then we see this video here of the aftermath where a Russian soldier is going by the bridge and we can see a crater, a, a long and thin crater here on the left side of the road, which indicates that the bridge may still be usable. However, this is something that has to be repaired and it may take a few days to a few weeks. Unsure exactly how long it would take to transport everything needed and to actually build it. And then according to him, the uh, shrapnels and so on shows the fact that it is a French made rocket. So according to the Russians, they have everything they need to prove it is a French made rocket. And as you can see, the border itself between the two regions, it is by the bridge. The bridge is included in the Crimean region. So this means that the Russian forces would consider this a strike on Crimea. And even if we ignore that fact, the Ukrainian strike on this bridge is actually very significant in the sense that it is one of the main roads used to transport 
a logistics between Crimea and Melitopol as it goes through the main highway between the two cities as well as uh, this area here to the east has allegedly also been struck at some points however I'm not really sure and it seems that the roads itself is uh, barely usable in the first place due to it being essentially on a beach then we have this final bridge across which is here on the western side which is fairly close to the Ukrainian positions across the Kherson uh, area and by the Dnieper River so the risks here would increase at the same time as it being a huge uh, detour then we can now take a look at the northern parts of front line first off to the north of Marinka in the direction of Krasnovarivka the Ukrainian forces managed to capture this tiny bit here but what is significant about it is the trench networks that is connected to this this is a front line that is connected since 2014 so the ukrainian forces have built these trenches a long time ago and have held this position this is the first time they've crossed through since the latest ceasefire uh, with the minsk 2 agreement which indicates that the fighting here seems to intensify as ukrainian forces may look to do something in this area then we see to the south of Kurdyomivka, the Ukrainian forces captured further parts of the western bank of the canal, which it means that the Ukrainian forces now have almost full control over the western part of the canal, leaving them with two bridgeheads across, one south of Osarianivka and one north of Klishivka. But other than that, the Russians are still holding on to most of the canal line here in the southern parts of Bakhmut. If the Ukrainians are pushed back and the Russians manage to recapture the parts here south of the canal, south of Osiria and Ivka, then they'll be able to hold a proper defensive line all the way up to Klishivka. So we may see some Russian interest in fighting here in the southern parts. But other than that, the Ukrainians continue to attack the Russian bridgehead across the canal. And then finally here by Spirine, south of the village, the Russian forces have advanced slightly here to the south of the village, crossing uh, some of the fields and taking parts of the forest lines, but they've uh, barely captured anything new. Finally, the latest piece of news that is very significant and you should stay to listen. It is about the latest uh, recruitments to the Russian army. So the statement sounds, and I've simplified it, through the use of ChatGPT, but essentially what Sergei Shoigu says in a meeting with Vladimir Putin is first, the Russian armed forces are in the process of forming a reserve army and an army corps. And generally a reserve army consists of multiple army corps. So most likely they're forming about three army corps. More than 3,700 units of equipment will be al allocated to these newly forming units. The specific types of equipment aren't mentioned in the passage. Among these new formations are five regiments that will be part of the 20th Army Tank Army. As of the time of the statement, these regiments are set to be 60% complete, presumably meaning that they have received 60% of their assigned personnel and equipment. The Defense Minister expects the formation of the Reserve Army and the Army Corps to be completed by the end of June, so in a week's time. On average, about 1,336 people are being enlisted per day on the contract. A regiment typically has around this many personnel, so this figure suggests that the Russian military is recruiting personnel at a rate of sufficient to form a new regiment every day. Under these direct contracts, 114,000 people have been recruited. In addition to these, there is an additional 50,000 volunteers, which adds up to 160,000. And then uh, we see DPA, uh, Defense Politics Asia, you should check him out on YouTube. He made some calculations based on this. He says an army is usually two to three corps, which is at least 90,000 troops, and one corps is two to five divisions, around 45,000 troops. So, with this information, we can tell that 114,000 plus 50,000 is 164,000. Three corps times 45,000 troops, that's 135,000. However, here I disagree with the following. Uh, Calculation, 5 regiments times 5,000 is 25,000. However, the earlier mention, a regiment is 
about 1336 troops as they mentioned they have 1336 recruits every day which corresponds to a regiment so if we have this as the average 1500 troops as a regiment times five that's 7500 troops this however adds up to 142,500 which is 20,000 shorts of what the accounted number is. After doing some quick google searches I found that the average regiment size of a tank regiment in the Russian army is between 1400 and 1500 soldiers so that uh, average estimate is accurate. Then we have to look at the army corps size and according to the uh, Wikipedia page the average estimate is between 15,500 and 60,000. If we estimate that everyone is 50,000, three army corps is 150,000, which adds up to 157,500, which could leave the difference and accounted for being 7,000, which is uh, barely, uh, it's meager enough for that to be unaccounted for. So essentially we're seeing a new army of 160,000 Russian troops, including five tank regiments. Each tank regiment has about 100 tanks, which means about 500 additional tanks. This is very interesting because that is an offensive power. On top of this, we're also seeing the uh, Wagner forces re regathering their strength and they have allegedly 50,000 new uh, troops, which would leave 100 which would leave 200,000 new troops on the front line being able to enter as additional forces. This would put huge pressure on the Ukrainian forces and we may see an offensive on the Russian side. Let's leave that for another video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.